Today we wrap up our Industry and Labor series as Dr. Martha Palanti takes us inside the old Niles Firebrick Company to learn how workers perform this dangerous job. My grandfather came here as a 10-year-old from um, Bagnoli Erpino, which is in uh, the southern half of Italy. He came to join his father, who'd emigrated a year before to work at a company called the Niles Firebrick. It actually opened in 1872. Their association to this place is that the Niles Firebrick actually makes the ceramics that line blast furnaces and uh, most of the surfaces in a steel mill. And it's a very highly skilled um, operation. My great-grandfather, let's start there, was actually a kiln operator. And it was a skill he'd learned in Italy, so he understood how to fire a kiln. They're dome-shaped to create the most heat. Um, there are several parts to the job. First, you have to make the bricks. And when they were doing it in the 1890s and the early 1900s, um, they did it by hand. Each of the bricks fired weighs between 10 and 15 pounds. They were pressing and molding three at a time, um, wet. They weigh considerably more because that's what you're going to fire out. There was a very delicate science to loading a kill. Um, you wanted to get as much raw material in it as possible, but there was a balance. When you hit too much, then it didn't fire correctly and the whole load would be wasted. My grandfather was actually a kiln firer, which meant that he tended the coal fires that actually raised the heat. There'd be eight to 10 openings at the bottom of the kiln, sort of at the sides and underneath it. And what a kiln operator did was they basically walked around the kiln for eight or 10, 12 hours a day, making sure that each of the fires was at the correct temperature and they did it by sight. When it, when it started to get low, um, they'd add a little more coal. It takes um, about 24 hours to get the temperature up. It takes 72 to get it down. So once they started a fire, it was at least five days and sometimes as long as seven that they had to maintain those kilns constantly. And they did it in two hour shifts. Sometimes if the guy didn't show up who was to replace you, you had to work a double. So you literally worked it 24 hours because if you didn't, the thing was going to explode. I think it's important for folks to understand that everybody has a story. Everybody has an immigration tale. Everybody has a story about how they got here. And for a lot of people in the Mahoning Valley, the records and the information about that story start here. 